rockets in there, kids? Oh, yeah, man. You know the name Estes? Huh? I don't oh, yeah. Mean, I don't mean your name. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I, I had a three or four year obsession. Look at. He signed this one. Wow. Oh, wow. You that know is what? one of their rockets, correct? Big Bird. That is the one of they. Well, fell. that actually is a super. Well, read it. <laughs> Read it. It's a super mega, ultra colossal, humongous, gargantuan, enormous, gigantic, titanic, huge, immense, monstrous, vast, elephantine, whopping, hulking, commodious, prodigious, magnificent, massive, mammoth, cyclopean, brobdignagian, behemothian. I made that one up. Just plain large. It's it's just a big one. You know what's really amazing is that is exactly what my signature looks like. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Well, that guy's very famous. If you like, oh yeah, hobby rockets. Oh yeah. Wow. He's like There's an aisle dedicated to him in every hobby. Oh, yeah. Go under the hobby store. Yeah, I do. Well, uh, this is the climb up there. Yeah, I had to stop building it about five years ago. You got it. I'm moving in. The floor is exactly 15 feet high. How much and is you rent? Uh, Rent. <laughs> Isn't it cool? I just need a sleeping bag. Isn't puppy. it cool up there? It's really nice. It's supposed to have a little cabin. Oh yeah. And it's supposed to have a dumb waiter. So that well that's what Lisa wanted. And I built the dumb waiter in the hatch. But you see in five years the tree's grown and I have to uh, remodel it. Mm. Oh I see the little space for the yep, dumb it's waiter. A hatch. <laughs> but even it's changed. <laughs> oh this is just lovely. There was a time when it looked new. <laughs> it will again, but see, I have to take apart some of its structure to rebuild it. That's what happens with three houses. Come on in here. Wow. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Protect the door. Preserve the door. See, it's cooler in here, huh? It smells so good in here. It smells like wood, probably. Yes, yeah. it does. Woods and blues. Oh, there she is. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, well, well, photographs do her no justice. Oh, my. It's, uh, it's not, the neck is not screwed in just yet. See, I'm getting yeah. ready to, uh... Don't tear her poor head off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting <laughs> ready to <laughs> screw oh, man, and glue it's that thing. Fit. It's a good fit. Oh, man. This is the first one. So it's all a learning experience. Let's get those tuners out. Wow. Well. Isn't that cool? Yeah, great job. And you're building this at the same time? Oh, uh, that's another thing I'm building on spec. This is a bazooki. Ah. This is it's like the one you mm -hmm. played, except mm. better. Hmm. Lots. Of course it's this better. is a this is my style. See, mm -hmm. you got that same shape. And I also like to have what's called a shoulder. This one doesn't have one, it's flush, it's smooth. But that's, that's we did that on purpose. It would probably look clunky, but this one here, see, is long scale, narrow neck, and that thing will sound like a, a lot like a size. See, look at this. Isn't that, gonna, isn't that oh, just cool? Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, you can totally get it. He's gonna put kind of an ebony, uh... Yeah, there's gonna be a nice, a nice shield boss. That's what it's called. See, these uh, weird machines were invented in England, in 1748, I think. And the reason is because steel was invented at the same time. And if you'd used copper, you have only an inch of movement, and the string stretches, so you could not tune up the higher pitches. You just couldn't do it. So it's all that and this are all tied together. The reason they have multi-scale is in order to make the bases work mm -hmm. with the trebles. The trebles couldn't be too long. If they're long, they pull, they stretch. The less string you have to stretch, the more likely you are to tune it up to pitch. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a history lesson, you know? Yeah. It's something, some of this I've been learning just building this instrument. I knew about the wire strings. So these were John, there, John Preston, right? Is that the guy? Well, that those are, or Preston invented them. This right. is a, an outgrowth. See, yeah. the Preston ones were, you had to use a key. Watch key. Yeah, right. it's a yeah. clock key. It'd go inside there, and so they went straight. 
but people then fanned them out so that you could individually adjust them. Get your hands in. Yeah, and you'll note that they're offset. There's two two different lengths, and the reason is so they can fit the, the smaller ones between the larger, the longer ones. Very strange. I mean, you don't need those. You only have an inch of movement. I'm going to pair this uh, neck down more, you know, it's the last thing I'll do. Because it's just kind of roughed up. Yeah, pull it apart and there's, a, there's an adjustable rod in there. Yeah. You see the holes, these, sometimes I set inserts in there, but on this one I'm not. I'm just using these wood screws. And then that's a truss rod, but it's a double expanding rod. What it does is it, try, it shortens the lower rod, causing it to bend like this. So it has a convexity on the top. The only thing I'll do different next time is I'll make that tenant come down to here. Can we see the top of the body where they join together? It's a piece of balsa wood. I always put lightweight filler material in that spot. This is also unorthodox. And, and twice I've had to take the necks off. So what I've done on my own instruments, I've never had to repair them or anything. What I've done is I string the, I take the screws out, I string the instrument up to ultra high pitch and then slowly let it open up without the screws. But every Taylor guitar sold today has screws holding necks on. Every Taylor and every Breedlove and every, you know, most Collings. Getting ready. Okay, here's my other favorite guitar, Explorer. Okay, Jackson Brown. Another great who, for what I do, is folk singing. Anyway, look at this. Uh oh. See? They dug your building this explorer. Oh, this is old. This is neck through oh the whole God. way. It had a top on it, but I wasn't happy with it, so I scraped it off. I'm so this. I'll put another <laughs> top on it. The mm -hmm. overlay is already made. Oh, that's this is really cool, and what's really neat is it's neck through never the this. whole way. <laughs> okay, this, as as far as guitars go, is one of the great shapes. Hell yeah. This thing fits your body and your playing style, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're me, most guitar players, in ways that just, there's one called the Parker Fly, it's, it's the most comfortable guitar ever made, but this is the most playable guitar, is an Explorer. <laughs> Built so, stance. when I saw <laughs> these, now the reason I know about this guy is that Fender started selling a Stratocaster and a Telecaster shaped acoustic flat top steel steel uh -huh. guitar. There's the first Jagstang. You know what a Jagstang is? Mustang Jaguar. Kurt Cobain. Mm -hmm. wow. My second guitar I ever had was a Fender Mustang. Mm -hmm. And this is like a Mustang mixed with a Jazzmaster. Hmm. I mean the Jaguar. Mm -hmm. Jazzmaster and Jaguar are the same body. So this, he built this just before the guy killed himself. So it's in here. It shows how old the book is. Beliefs. So that is what that's for. Let's see, there's some other things. Like there's a name I cut out for another ukulele I sold to somebody. Bailey. 
And here is, let's see, let's find some, uh, there are some snowflakes getting ready to be cut. In wow. fact, these probably are going to go on yours. I don't mm. know, maybe. I like that motif for the neck. Or the, uh, well, it'll be something I haven't yet little, decided. The little diamond thing. See, here's a logo cut. Mm -hmm. Here's the W. And what's the saw you use? What's the tool? Well, I'll get that out. This is a. Uh, this is a. Uh, here we go. Red abalone. This one sat on somebody's patio for a while. You can tell because it has an efflorescence, a sheen. Hmm. It's not quite as bright. But it's the same thing. This area is called the heart. There's a barnacle spot. Mm -hmm. Barnacles, they, they get onto this and they'll dig in and they try to, they can sometimes damage. This is probably about 12 years old, the animal. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite part. It's very difficult to process. It looks like a bird's eye maple in bright flashy colors. So mm -hmm. that's a red abalone here, up there. Oh wow. Not one of these is legal to take and eat. They're all washed up on the beach in season. Mm. And it tastes like chicken. Mm. And you get half pound from big ones like that. Wow. Maybe a pound. Yeah, there's one of the shapes. One of those mm -hmm. one of those pieces came from that shell. You take this in there to do that? Um that cuts in one pass mm -hmm. usually and sometimes it breaks and I have to throw it away it's very tedious oh well, you just have to understand how I work I am like a you know what a bower bird is you ever heard of one no the bird that uh, builds a bower which is like a an arch roof and inside it gathers bright glittery things gum wrappers Ooh. pieces you know in the old days pull tabs that came off of cans they grabbed those Hmm. And then they build them. That's Orville Gibson's work. Hmm. Gibson employed a. Uh, see, look at that. Oh. He employed a, a, a Turkish inlay cutter, and uh, that's why a lot of those early instruments uh -huh. have a uh, crescent. Mm. Oh. always look that. Moon and star. And Orville Gibson invented, patented one process, and that is how to carve these out of one piece of wood. Hold it. What is it? <laughs> above all else? Here, go ahead. What do you notice above it, above all else about that? That it's pretty. Well, it is pretty. <laughs> and it's very light. It's extremely light. It's almost like a hot air balloon. You know, it could float away. Hmm. All lutes have to be that way. Now, I've built several lutes. I and saw the latest them. ones I've built have been really light. I don't have them. But I do have this. What oh. is that? I was looking at that earlier. What is that? <laughs> With the spinning wheel? It does look like a hot air balloon. Yeah, well, this one's pretty light, too. My, I'm a historian. My area of expertise is Greco-Roman world ancient, especially Roman Empire after Augustus for about 380 years. The prettiest things that I have ever seen in my entire life, like the only piece of art that has ever really made me cry, were the horses inside in, in Venice, inside yes, of I've seen them. St. Yes, Mark's. The so-called four horsemen, which were all, you know, stolen long ago. Mm -hmm. They were under the water. They're so beautiful. Because they were, they, they were lost in the uh, channel mm -hmm. along, I mean, the canal before, before they were mounted. And when? 1200, something like that, CE, 12, 1245. Like you can just see that whoever created those things knew so much about the anatomy yes. of the it, animal yes and they're just that's roman art they're still perfect After Greek. today like you look at them and I you know. see all the veins and the musculature stuck. my uh my muse my spiritual mentor in the art world is phidias do you have you ever heard of phidias mm -hmm. you have you've heard, heard of phidias of i know the name but okay I well phidias is. is most well known for two amazing statues one was the athena um what do you parthenos in the parthenon there's a copy of what she looked like probably from coinage in nashville in their uh, in their parthenon copy they have i've been there quite a few times 
drooling over that statue. <laughs> but what he's really known for is the one of the seven wonders of the world, the statue of Zeus in Olympia. Oh, we've which, seen that. Yes. Well, it's it's the statue's gone. It was stolen by mm -hmm. the the uh, by the the oh, what is it? The director of antiquities of Theodosius the third who in what four four thirty seven he's the one that had all the temples looted and burnt mm. he's a radical Christian and uh, it was stolen minus its uh, gold his uh, hair was gold his clothing was gold all that was left was the ivory and some of the semi precious uh, and precious stones glass Lots of amazing glass. And uh, it was built uh, 2,500 years ago. It lived for 800 years and was burnt in Constantinople, burned in Istanbul. In, when the hell was that? It wasn't one of the Crusades, because they burnt, <laughs> the Crusaders burnt Constantinople. <laughs> Isn't that stupid? Yeah, they invited it's them. It's Western yeah. Christians, Orthodox, yeah. I mean, uh, Orthodox mm -hmm. Roman Catholics, and Eastern Rite Orthodox Christians didn't like each other. Mm. So as they're passing through, they just burn it. They loot it and burn it. It's dumb. Anyway, it was burnt before then. The amazing statue after 800 years. Well, I went there in 1995, and I hung out for three days at the Altus, the, the sanctuary where the Olympic Games were played. Everybody likes to think about the Olymp Olymp. Olympia being about the Olympic Games, but the games are just a side. Mm -hmm. They were just a sideshow. What it was was the great altar of Zeus and the temple. It was also a temple to Hera there. Mm -hmm. It's also where it was. It was a one of three places where the um, city states, the polises in ancient Greece, uh, kept their their treasures, their treasuries, spoils of war. So that's that's that man that made those. He also sculpted or had sculpted or designed and had sculpted the the Parthen the the Panathenaic frieze that's now called the Elgin Marbles, which is in London. Amazing. So what you're talking yeah, about I've seen that, one. that that incredible lifelike sculpting technique that in bronze that those four horses those were Roman copies of Greek originals. And the Romans, from the period of probably time of Julius Caesar all the way up until, I don't know, Marcus Aurelius, that was the highest art, in my opinion, of the world. Elements of musical instrument design. And I, my, my, my weighting, or the order I put them in, is a little bit backwards from a lot of uh, builders. But the first one is aesthetics, the second one is playability, the third one is sound. Some people would like to put sound first. You know, I don't blame them. You know, if you are a musician, sound's very important. But a good musician can make a cigar box instrument or a you know wash tub bass sound good, better than a bad musician. But it doesn't play well and it doesn't sound good, and it's certainly not aesthetic. So this is aesthetic right here, first and foremost. It's got to be blended. This is a series of curves. This is my own design, this shape. It's modeled after or, you know, inspired by the traditional ones, but it's 15 inches in diameter, and it's, uh, what, uh, 14 to 12 inches or 13 inches long, and the aesthetics of it are really important. That's why I put the nice uh, bear claw spruce top. The next is the comfort and playability. And the instruments I make, these are very comfortable. They fit your body really well these things. They're very unusual. Almost nobody makes them of cut down sides. This has a slightly cut down side if you look at it. It does it just slightly at the back. It's a little bit thin. It's the thinnest right here although it, it, it grows back to this mm -hmm. and it also is tapered. And then the third thing is the sound. If the two, the first two are in harmony then the sound will follow. Mm 